advantages of using the chat is that it's, it's persistent. So if you miss something and you can come back later and you don't have to set up like a server to <laughs> keep track of it. Um, so it's much more accessible to uh, say non um, non geek or <laughs> maybe non developers. <laughs> yeah, like myself. <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a good point, and um, that's one thing that I've I've found that collecting and posting the logs is really important because not everybody can be involved in all the discussion that occurs all yeah. week. Uh, and so when you have a one hour meeting, that's really, really useful, but you need to have the artifacts of a log or minutes or something um, to let people in the future or that weren't able to attend to see what discussions were and what got made. And I think that's probably gonna be especially important for a development meeting because you're making technical decisions uh, so being able to have some sort of record of that, um, whether that's a log or a wiki page or whatever makes sense for the team, um, is really important. Logs are easy because you just copy them. Um, Chris and that's Bryce, we have a question in the chat. What do the board member wish everyone else knew about the board? It's a um, public service position. That's what. I <laughs> Yeah, it's a, it's a commitment. Chris, why don't you talk more about it? Me? Oh, okay. Well, I mean, I'm, I guess I'm, I'm fairly new to the board yeah. compared to some other folks. But um, yeah, I mean, uh, it's, it's more um, administrative than glamorous, I suppose. I think they, I think uh, people have kind of a perception of us like as sitting around this massive table and we're like, this is what's going to happen, and, we're, <laughs> and it's like, it, yeah, we're trying to figure stuff out mostly. <laughs> That's I'm, all. I'm back, everybody. Um, hey, Doc. So we so we have a board meeting now. I'm going to throw the running of this to Bryce so that he can run this as a meeting. Um, thank you, everybody, for this open sex section. All right. So attendance. Who do we have? So Mark, Chris, and. Uh, Tav is also sir. Tav was here. Is he in chat? It's still here, yeah. I'm here. I'm here. Ted. Okay, good. And Ted's out at a baseball game. Who are you missing? Josh. Josh. Okay. So agenda. Let's see. Can I paste the agenda in here? Or has the agenda been pasted? I think uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna introduce myself and hopefully everybody else can introduce themselves. Sorry to but embrace um, because I think possibly yes. you know, I think it asks know who we are. Right. So go ahead. Uh, so I am Martin o o Owens. I am uh, British, but I live in Boston, United States. Um, I am a programmer, but I, I do many many things for the pro project, like uh, website development, website administrator, um, etc. Uh, I've been on the board for about it two years now, something like that. And um, yeah, I, people will come to me if they have issues with the website or they have issues with um, things like uh, forums. Does anybody else want to introduce themselves? Sure. Chris? Oh. Me or <laughs> yeah, I'll uh, I'll go next. Uh, <laughs> I'm um, I'm C Rogers or or Chris Rogers or whatever you like. Um, I'm C Rogers on the chat and um, on most Inkscape forums, but um, I'm a, a graphic designer. I'm a heavy pro user of uh, <laughs> of Inkscape. Um, I I came from the Adobe uh, software. Asylum <laughs> to uh, uh, to Inkscape, um, and I found that I really like the community and the idea of having a, a free software tools, and decided to start contributing. Um, I can't remember how long I've been on the board, <laughs> but um, it, yeah, it's on the website. I think <laughs> is it okay? I'll I'll look it up later. Mark. 
Yeah. Uh, hi, so my name is Marc. Uh, I'm a research engineer in a French university called Telecom Paris. And I have been in the Inkscape community for a few years. And I do some bug fixes, a few features, and a lot of infrastructure, some infrastructure work. And I know a lot of things about how Inkscape what Inkscape does and how it works and yeah, things related. And I also, I can also do uh, basically anything sysadmin related. Tav? Tav, go for it. I'm Tav, I've been involved in Inkscape for quite a while now. I started off by doing, well, writing a book on Inkscape and to get into the to figure out how things worked, I actually had to get into the code, and then there were bugs that I couldn't help fixing, and I've been here ever since. I, uh, from the US originally, but I've been in France now for 13 years, I think. It's a very good book, too. Uh, we point people to it all the time. Yeah, Tab also was heavily involved with the <laughs> SVG Standards uh, Committee. So yes. he was our face on that group while it was active. And technically, I still am, although the uh, SVG working group is limping along very, very slowly. Maybe I will join the SVG with WG. You would, uh, you would, uh, I can you would increase the number of active members by a third. <laughs> All right, I'm Bryce Harrington. I uh, was one of the four founders of Inkscape. Um, my role from the beginning was uh, more organizational and trying to get people involved. Uh, I did a lot of the release management work early on. These days I do, um, in addition to the board, I do infrastructure stuff. So if you need access to resources or whatever, I can help with that. Um, do we have anybody else? Josh or Ted? Um, Josh and Ted are both long-term, long-time participants. Ted was one of the co-founders of the project and is still involved in random things. Anything else we should say about ourselves before we dive into the agenda? Uh, oh. Does anybody have any uh, questions for any of us before we kick off? There was a question for Tav. Why aren't you French after all this time? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, if you heard me try to speak French, you would definitely know I'm not French. My French is horrible. All right, let's uh, get into the agenda. So it looks like we have Hackfests, GitLab, uh, Google Summer Code, um, Vicky Brassur meeting, <laughs> debrief. If I pronounce that right, and uh, community and developer discussions, and then other business. So, on the topic of hackfests, which last time we talked about, we decided to let uh, Martin organize this, and here we are. So, <laughs> what after this? Uh, it will depend on the global situation, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, um, my guess is that at least here in the US, we are going to be locked down for a long time. So I'm not even sure next year that we're going to be doing much traveling. So yeah, I, maybe I agree. we do another one of these. My, my position in the US is, is you know, we're, I expect even in Massachusetts, which is doing relatively well, uh, that we're going to be locked down for a long time. Yeah, US. Uh... Residents are banned from Europe at the moment. Although you Canadians can still get into okay. the UK. Huh? Yeah. You can still get into the UK, though. Yeah, but all right, uh, for six months, and then they leave the, <laughs> they, they leave the, uh, the European Union, and then we'll be banned like everybody else. Has oh, no, we, we, the UK has already left. London isn't that's doing why, much better. That's why people can still go to the UK, is because they, they left. Anyway, I, I would like to suggest oh. that yeah. 
Go ahead, Chris. Go ahead. Oh, no, no, no. Sorry. I was uh, acknowledging that uh, Doc is right, actually. Um, but yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, you don't want to come to London any more than you want to go to the States at this time. We're not doing very well <laughs> as, far, as far as keeping everybody in masks. Uh, I'm in yeah. Italy, and uh, they have it under control here because everybody wears masks, and they have or it's actually against the law to go out without a mask on. And that's the only way that they got it under control in the end. You remember they were in the news for having like a, a pretty high infection rate and lots of death. And they had to learn the hard way to do it this way. And it seems like in the States and in the UK, where I, I usually live in London, uh, they um, they haven't learned that lesson yet. So we'll see what happens. Yeah. Anyway, what does everybody state. think about the fo format of this uh, of this hackfest so far? So far, so good. I, I so what I was going to say was that um, let's hear from other people how this how this goes this this time, and if it goes well, if people like it, let's just plan on doing this again um, or something similar to this uh, uh, at least next time, and then uh, maybe in a couple of years we can look at getting back together again. What do you guys think about that? Yeah. Well, there is the uh, LGM supposedly next year. Well, I mean, we can still consider like on a one by one basis, case by case basis, like if if individuals or small small groups of people in Inkscape, and I mean, not just on the board, but everybody involved in the project, if anybody wants to do travel to LGM or other events, I mean, we can certainly do those as, you know, their own separate travel thing because um, there'll, there'll be people in countries and countries with events that are not going to be affected by this that are safe and so you know as long as we are attentive to the conditions that we're not putting anybody in danger you know i don't see any problem that we can't, couldn't send people to things like that it should should we be open to hack, hack fest Let's like smaller, more local hack fest, like we did with the release, where I believe a couple of individuals got, got together within your, Europe. Yeah, like I said, I mean, we can consider everything on a case by case basis and where it makes sense if some people want to get together for a local hack fest in their community. I mean, I don't even know if they need the board involvement for something like that because the travel expenses should be pretty, pretty modest. But if they need, you know, a room rental or um, ground travel reimbursement, we can, th that's easy. Those are easy things we could certainly do. I don't think we should, I'm not sure we should intentionally try to force organize something like that, um, but just be open if people have that as an idea that they want to do that we'll support them to do that. It might be a good idea to encourage people to host uh, their own um, mini uh, pop-up hack fests. If there's something that you want to work on on Inkscape, and you can get a, a small group of people to leverage the chat and everything. This is we have so many different rooms now to get something done. Um, you don't need the board approval to do that, by the way. Uh, you know, have those and invite people to come and work on Inkscape. It's community software, after all, and you're part of the community. So, where is LGM next year? Do they decide that yet? When? Where when or where? Year? Yeah, yeah, it's, it will be in France uh, because this uh, this year's uh, LGM was cancelled or put online, so uh, it will take place in France. Okay, so those of you in France already, maybe you can. It'd be easy for you to attend that if you want to. Yeah, of course. All right. Anything else on Hackfests? Um, why don't we plan on doing a debrief next board meeting on how this went and go from there. Uh, so the next board meet, meet, meeting, the, this will still be going on. So there's another five of these. Oh, so great. I, we still have two or one left to go. Okay, but we'll, we'll have enough experience under our belt to know what works, what doesn't. All right, that sounds good. Uh, moving on to GitLab. What uh, what's the uh, okay. who, who wants to talk about that? Yeah, I can talk about this. Uh, 
So uh, we are on uh, our project is on GitLab.com. So we already are on the enterprise version of GitLab, and we already make heavy use of some enterprise versions uh, uh, features. So we we use uh, features that are not open source, but uh, the good point of that is that we can self host our GitLab. Uh, community and if, if if GitLab goes evil, then we can host our GitLab and migrate our projects there. So that was the base, the compromise we made by going to GitLab uh, and instead of setting up infrastructure. Uh, so the question now is: uh, Do we want to do specific arrangements with GitLab? So there are two things that they uh, asked us if we want to take part in. So the first one is. Do we want to use a uh, group level uh, ent uh, enterprise edition uh, features? So uh, it's like uh, epics and group tags and things like that. So that we have features at the whole uh, project level that will that we could use. So they asked if we want that. So if we want that, we just have to register as an open project using GitLab.com, and then we automatically have that. And we don't have to engage in anything specific if we want to be part of that. We just have to be listed as an open source project that uses GitLab.com. So that's the first question. Do we want to use more proprietary features from GitLab See, we already used some. So, do we want to use more of them? Um, are they features that you think you would that would be useful to you? Some of them, yes, I think. Like epics are things that we could, I think, I think use or um, like uh, Kanban board at the project level. Yeah, I do know that there are other open source solutions for some of these things um, that they don't have to be done through GitLab, but it can be very convenient to do things in a cohesive platform. Um, but what does everybody else think? My, my view is that um, we should re reduce as much as possible our dependence on any proprietary um, extensions, uh, partially because we don't, we, we want to be able to keep to our sto story that we truly believe that GitLab really should be free software. Like there's no, there's no business case for them to really have a private thing. But this is something that we have to balance with uh, the developer team's needs. Yeah, I think in the end the developers should uh, decide this, but I have a feeling that most of the developers would probably agree with that. Um, yeah, if we have to host it ourselves, all that stuff goes away. So, eh. yeah, you know, that's a good point. So maybe, um, maybe this is a question mark that the can be in the development team meeting, and you guys can decide how strongly you want it, um, and then we can go from there. Uh, Offhand, I, for, for my usage of Git, GitLab for organizing teams and stuff, I'm pretty much OK with what we have. Um, I don't have a whole lot of experience with the epics uh, in GitLab. I've used those with other um, Kanban software. Um, it depends on what level of uh, detail you want to organize your development projects. Uh, for, for what we already use, we use scope labels, uh, issue weights, uh, multiple assignees for issues, uh, related issues and duplicates. Uh, um, and stuff like, uh, I'm skimming through the, the issue boards too. Like the I, do, I do know that there could be some risks with self-hosting. The Xorg Foundation um, had been or ha runs their own uh, GitLab instance and the CI, I believe. The way they had it configured, it generated a huge amount of 
traffic that they had to pay for, like huge amounts of money. Um, so you have to be super careful about how that is all set up and configured if you're going to run it yourself. So I'm a little bit cognizant that even though we probably could run the software itself without too much trouble, uh, there could be some risks and and unexpected costs for doing that. Yeah, we, we, I don't think we should intend to migrate off GitLab.com. So th that's, that's not the question. It, it would be like very, I, I think it would like, uh, it would take uh, old source forge quantity of evilness for us to consider that. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's that's a good point with source forge is that we, we have that experience of like, getting a little bit too dependent on them to where it becomes hard to migrate off them when something happens that we just cannot stay there any longer. So, I, you know, it does make sense to be careful about adopting things that are going to make migration difficult. We also, we also should probably finish the first bug migration before we For sure. <laughs> consider another one. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I think the missing data point we have here is how strong the need is for this. Um, so Mark, you said you could make you good use out of it. Um, yeah, I'd like to... we, we could make without it because we already do, and we could use it. And it's I I mean it's just free. It's just like saying to GitLab that we are an open source project to be listed in the open source project they already support for free. Well, so now another question would be if we if we decided to use it and then decided, you know, we needed to migrate or whatever and stop using it, what kind of an impact would that be? Like, I imagine with something that's strictly for organizational purposes, like, um, like epics, that that wouldn't be a big deal to give up. No, it, it wouldn't be a big, uh, a big, I don't think we could be really dependent on that features. So we could uh, always migrate. Uh, it would not prevent migrating off because all the projects would not depend on that. Yeah. What about um, because about the code itself? The code is, is there is no no risk for the code in any uh, like there is no no but I mean no the, scenario. Uh, the proprietary uh, extensions, though, so I guess they're just, they're just, I mean, what, part of the problem with closed source proprietary software is that you don't know what the code does. On the no, we, we know what the code does in the case of GitLab, even their uh, non-free code is open, is um, like visible. You can go and read it. It just, it's okay. just not on a free license. Okay, then that, uh, that solves the issue for me for the most part, because if we can see what's running, then that that's like, I mean, it would be better if we could use it for free. <laughs> well, actually, we can use it for free. So <laughs> maybe that solves our problem. It doesn't solve it for everybody else. But in this case, I mean, that's not our, we're not a developing GitLab code anyway. So maybe it's not such a big deal. <laughs> I do have one commit for GitLab. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> yeah, it was a, a well, small big fix. <laughs> <laughs> Officially, Inkscape is now, now developing GitLab through Mark. <laughs> yeah. so, well, let's try to get let's try to get input from uh, Ted and Josh on this. So maybe maybe we should discuss it a little bit more at the meeting. It sounds like we're of multiple opinions, but maybe we could make a vote and go forward. And there is a second offer from Git from GitLab, uh, which is their partner program. Uh, so their partner program is it's unrelated things, and basically, uh, it would like other partners of them are uh, GNOME, KDE, Free Desktop, XFCU, Drupal, etc. And uh, it's a it's a new program from them where basically it's uh, about giving visibility to projects. And uh, basically, they organize live events, so they would invite us to that, and just it, it would make like it would allow us to say we host the Inkscape, and they use our project, so we are a good thing, and they would also give us some visibility. So it's uh, I think it's uh, mostly about visibility, and we have to 
say them if we are interested in that. I mean, we, we already that's... considered Git to be a partner, at least according to the website. Sorry? Yeah. Uh, we, yeah we already... so... Sorry, Sorry. Okay. <laughs> we, we already consider GitLab to be a, a, an infrastructure part partner uh, because we already ad advertise them on our website. Yeah, we've, uh, we've historically we've we've we let uh, SourceForge advertise us. We let Canon Canonical advertise us when we were a Launchpad. We let um, OHSU or uh, OS OSU OSL advertise us. SFC. So yeah, I, I, if that's all that we're asked to do, then that seems to be yeah, basically fine. Yeah, we, we they would ask us to sometimes tell uh, what what we use in GitLab, uh, tell about our experience with GitLab, and uh, basically participate in joint events, and that's basically what the requirements are, uh, except that we must be invited basically, so we are invited, and yeah, Does it could also grant us. It would also grant us a line of communication with GitLab with someone we can contact for things okay. we have. And also migration support if we want to migrate on our, on our instance someday, then we will have some support, official support for them, from them. So I, I don't see any real negative points about that yeah. uh, from, from myself. Like I said, this this sounds very similar to what we've always done with other organizations. So I don't, I don't even think we need to vote on this. I think that's is fine, um, unless anybody has an issue to raise with it, then we can talk about that. But otherwise, yeah, that sounds fine. So f the the first thing we need input for from Ted and Josh, and the second, yep, okay. Okay, so I think that's all for the for the GitLab uh, items. Yeah, and also getting back to the the epics and stuff, let's really get input from everybody else, um, mm -hmm. and uh, anybody that's doing development, and and get a feel for you know what people want and need, and you know there'll be a sense of like too many tools is too much tools. I think we saw that a bit with with Launchpad. There are a lot of features in there that. We, we didn't ever use, uh, so we should think about that too. So yeah, let's get a bit more input on that. All right, moving on, um, what's the next agenda item? Sorry, uh, summer code, Mark? No, everything is going well, I think. We, uh, we passed the first, uh, um, hard. The first evaluation with no no significant problems. All projects are roughly on track, more or less. So, for now, everything is all right, and I don't think we have many to discuss. Okay, cool. Well, that's good to hear. Look forward to seeing the report. Yeah, we could discuss things about how we. Uh, how we will decide who will go to the mentor or summit, but we don't know if there will be a mentor summit yet. So, all right. So next item is the Vicky Rasur meeting debrief. Did we have somebody that would could talk to us about that, Michelle or? I was there, but I don't know if I can really relate all that we talked about. Mahela, am I pronouncing that right? I think, did we record it or is there a meeting? Yes, yes, yes we, did. We, we recorded. We have a recording. So, um, We talked about, so, so in that meeting, she talked about uh, how to organize um, development work in ways that could be communicated to potential uh, volunteers or develop, uh, paid developers to work on. Uh, also with fundraising for 
uh, being able to communicate it to people that might want to uh, contribute to the project. Um, a lot of it was stuff that I think we've discussed quite a bit before, but it was kind of nice hearing the same things from a third party. Uh, all right, here's the meeting summary. Thank you, thank you. Um, and I think we've discussed having a follow-up meeting on it. He offered us uh, a chance to talk again in like three months. Do we, do we have a very quick, brief sum summary of the points? Yeah, there's a little bit here. Summary, put this up here, a little bit easier. Um, so, so, summary, plan ahead, have a roadmap and point people to it, uh, which we've we've worked on that in the past. So we know that with the roadmap that the, um, the better approach is to have more of a forecast of communicating what developers want to work on rather than a top-down document that tells people what they need to work on. Uh, because since we're all volunteers, we don't really um, work that way. Uh, document everything, decisions, discussions, meetings, and processes. Have criteria and some fixed release plan. Uh, communicate with contributors and their reports. Um, let's see. Yeah, one of the decisions taken was to set up regular weekly meetings around getting the project organization up to speed. I don't know who has that uh, action item or if that has started. Um, I think that also kind of fed into some of the interest in having a seeing a development meeting happening more regularly. Um, making a plan for the features we want to get into Inkscape before we ask for donations, like I mentioned. Um, what needs to be done in detail, what it might cost, uh, which I know is hard to do. That's something that we've struggled with since the start of the project because, you know, there's a lot of ideas, but getting those ideas written down in a form that are actionable um, is, is challenging, especially if it's not something that you have an experience in, which a lot of these things are because they're, they're new to us. Um, and also where there's things that users need that don't necessarily map to what developers want to work on. How do we bridge that? Uh, that could be challenging to you, but that's exactly the kind of things that would need to be done for this. Right, so um, the multi-page support was identified as a feature that hits all those things as something that we have developers that want to work on. We kind of know basically what needs to be done because it's similar enough to what is already in Inkscape. And it's something that's easy to communicate to volunteers and uh, funders to work on. So Mahela says we need developers to come up with an estimation for tasks and budget. Um, Mark, is that something that uh, the development team would be able to define, help define? Maybe. Maybe it's like a project manager kind of thing. And we may, maybe some developers are also project managers with uh, good estimates of what a project involves. But it, I mean, uh, a developer is not necessarily a, a project manager. Yeah, that's true. I think there was two, two suggestions. One which was to budget uh, resources for project management. So no, don't be shy about saying project management will cost this amount to even think about the problem. Yeah, but um, I never hired a project manager, so I don't know how much one costs. <laughs> yeah, we, a bootstrapping issue for sure. Um, and the other is that, um, that we may not be able to decide how much something will actually cost, right? So like it's, it's cost, but we may, it may be more easy to decide what value the feature has to the project or what value the process has to the project um, because then we can we can 
find developers who will meet that uh, contract. Yeah. And one other point that I brought up in that meeting, and that should be brought up here too, is that uh, we, I've talked to uh, Karen and Bradley at FCS, SFC about paid development in the past um, and contracting people. And uh, they have really, really emphasized that we should work with them from the get go on anything that involves contracts, because there's so much complexity in how to set that up and organize it. So as we go down this path, or if we go down this path, we need to make sure to set up some meetings with Karen or other people at F SFC to make sure that we're doing things correctly for that. On the fundraising side, though, if we just want to work on defining the project and, and raising funds for it, uh, I think we can pr probably handle a lot of that ourselves um, without needing to get too involved in them. But if we do get to the point of wanting to contract with someone, we need to involve them. Yeah, I mean, part, part of the issue why I think we need to move, make a move on, on doing some uh, paid development work is because we are, I think, reneging on our responsibility to use the money uh, effectively. Like we're, we're amassing a hoard, but not doing things with it that I think user, that would benefit the users that have given us that, that, that money. So it's- so Yeah, and that's, consistent. you're exactly yeah. right. And that's something that I've thought about since the first donation came in to the project is how can we turn this into something that I think I saw a blog post about LibreOffice and they have like more than 1 million they are not using or something like that. I mean, if we really got serious about fundraising, um, I think the potential's there because the money that we have, we haven't done really very much fundraising to get. And if we were actually organized about like communicating what we want to do and how we're going to use the money. And I think that our user base is big enough that we could, we could pull in a significant amount. And I think that, um, like you mentioned, like we don't know how much project managers cost. We don't really have a really good feeling for how much a developer costs or how much time it would take at least. Um, but we do know that it's a lot of money and more than we have in our coffers right now. So if we wanted to to do that, I think we need to scale up a little bit on on the fundraising side. And I think that we could. It's just a matter of putting the manpower into doing that. I think that. it might be it might be a, a something that we could do more immediately if we if we wanted to practice doing contracting uh, first. So they we make a decision to talk with Karen, talk with Bradley about doing a smaller thing that we know, first of all, we already know and I have identified projects like multi-page that are small enough that we could probably cover those costs now um, to kind of get ourselves into the habit and to so that more people within the pro project understand the process by which we would need to follow in order to do a successful contract. That makes sense. And in fact, could we break out a preliminary part of the multi-page thing? That would be like, you know, something on the order of a few weeks of work, uh, maybe a a planning task or experiments or prototyping or something. Yeah, I think that um, would definitely be possible. We should bring this to the developers meet, meeting because I think it's a specific. Right. Specific okay, so that's good. Um, is there anything else we should say about the meeting uh, with her? She suggested we reach out and hold meetings with other projects too. It's a good idea. Um, we we actually used to do that more. Well, not really meetings, but we coordinate with other projects a little bit more. So that would be great to do. Technically, um, this would be a ve vectors team um, task because outreach is their uh, manifesto. Mandate. So outreach to other pro projects might be some something we can ask them to, to do. Yeah. Uh, I'm I'm always hung, hanging out on other IRC. Uh, channels like uh, I'm all, always on the creator channel and a few others. You know the the very first LGM uh, we went to and um, GIMP and Blender and some of the other graphics organizations went to is very developer heavy compared to later LGMs. And I remember we had like towards the end of that uh, the projects just got together and just hashed out ideas on interoperability and like sharing of palette 
specifications and like a whole bunch of ideas kind of sparked from that just being able to get together and say you know what could we legitimately share given that we don't have you know we don't share code uh to make things easier for users and that was a really great i would love to see something like that happen again someday and so if anybody is interested in organizing some interproject meetings definitely please do that that's LTM. Maybe, yeah. Like half of yeah. the interest of LTM is just meeting with the authors project and discussing. I know, but I don't know that the that there have been some that we've gone to that there haven't really been very many developers at. Uh, so I think one thing that we've talked about was going to other projects meetings like the GNOME meetings or Blender events. Anyway, it's a great idea. Do you think a PM would be needed from the outside? I thought in this first try, we need an existing Inkscape dev to lead the contributor, and that would and that leadership is what the PM budget would cover. So the volunteering part of Inkscape doesn't prevent contractor from continuing. That's a good point, and that's something that we haven't really. Um, uh, we haven't made any decisions about or really discussed at all. Uh, you know, on the one hand, if you got someone that has project management experience, then you know there's some value there. Whereas if you get someone from inside the project that might not have project management experience but know how knows how the project works, that might make sense too. So we haven't really made any decisions about that, but it's a it's a it's a good question, and I I think we well. It's something that we should discuss more. I don't know if, if there's anybody that meets all the criteria that we would want. But um, the important thing is that we would need to, before we get to that point, it's like picking a person or deciding who to do. There's a whole bunch more legwork on the contract side that we need to work with SFC to make sure we're not, what they're worried about is that we're not just like, you know, trying to benefit a friend kind of a situation or, you know, something that's going to run afoul of tax law or, other issues. So we need to think about just in isolation of who would do the work. We need to think about what work needs to be done and, and how it's going to be done. All right. Is there anything else? Does SOC have legal templates for that? Um, that's a good question. I don't know that they do, but they have done this with other projects, so it's possible. Um, and if we uh, contact, I think Karen said that she'd be happy to come and host a meeting with us if um, we want to go down, if we want to do contracting so she could go over with us what the process is and what we would need to do. Um, and I think that would be a good idea. I think we need to get our ducks in a row um, before we do that to make sure we have good questions for her. and. Um, know what we will do and what we're going to do. But part of me actually regrets now not inviting the uh, SFC to uh, participate in this ha hack fest for a small period of time. Yeah. Um, I'll do that next time. Yeah, maybe next time. All right. Um, next topic. Community and developer development. Um, who added this item and what would you like to say? I, I put that on there. Uh, OK, go for it. Uh, you remember a few years ago, we sent out C books, C++ books to the developers. And at least I found the book I got to be very useful and have referred to it over time. And I thought maybe a, a good thing to use some of our money for is to do something similar, but not just to developers. We could also, when we were talking about like community development there, a couple of books that were mentioned at the, at the meeting with Vicky, uh, that might be good for people to have cop hard copies of. That's a great idea, yeah. So I guess it comes up with Deciding, you know, who would be eligible to get books, uh, a list of books that in the list mm -hmm. of books that we can send out to mm -hmm. people. Yeah, and we could follow the same approach that we used the last time, which was we needed a list of, like you said, a list of books 
to pick from and then a list of people to select. Um, so, and so I guess we need someone to just coordinate making those decisions and coming up with a plan and, and communicating it and carrying it out. Is that something that you're interested in doing, Tav, or is there someone else that would be? I could be interested in doing it. Uh, maybe somebody from the develop, I mean, from, uh, from vectors, vectors, uh, could assist or could do it. I mean, I, I, um, I'm trying to, I'm trying to poke, um, the project into having a more like mentor or just like developer development, um, arm. So like some, cause we don't want to put everything onto ve ve vectors as effective as that team is. Uh, I think there is space to have a sort of educational slash mentor slash, you know. Yeah. I guess we, we need maybe people to propose books and uh, and make a list. I maybe put together a web page and. Good idea. Yeah, I remember it being relatively easy. I mean, there was some there's some uh, complication in getting things to uh, people in other countries and dealing with money transactions, but that's all just technical stuff. Other than that, it was pretty straightforward. Um, and it seemed like a pretty low cost way to improve the, uh, the, the knowledge base of the project. Yeah, I don't remember how we did it before, but I remember, I, I don't think it was very complicated. I, think, I don't know if the SFC sent them out. Themselves. Yeah, they did. Yeah, so I needed to send to collect the address, the mailing addresses of people, and then send them to SFC to send and what book to send who. Um, but as far as I know, we can follow the same process here. Okay, sounds good. I, I'll put together a page and send out something that. One other question. I know that. Um, myself, but I know others, like physical books are not necessarily how people are getting their information quite as much. Uh, so while I think a, a book thing is great, I, you know, are there other things besides books that would help community members and developers gain knowledge? I don't know. I mean, we, we could do things like um, peer merge request reviews, right? So looking at a code that's coming in and, and processing things, maybe a bit like the developers meet, meeting that happens in a cadence, maybe some kind of sort of, if not like specifically mentor um, fo focused, at least educationally fo focused, so we can um, look, at, look at codes together. Yeah, you know, at work, one thing that uh, we do for our onboarding of new employees is we'll have a, uh, like a, uh, for like doing bug triage, for instance, um, someone that hasn't ever done that before uh, will pair up with one or two other people that are on the team and they'll just go through and do a session together of like, okay, here's how we triage this bug and this is how we respond to this person and so forth. Um, and the same thing for like packaging and so on and so forth. That seems to work really well. Um, and that is something that we could do or encourage doing here too. So in, in two weeks time, we have the, the developers day Hackfest, um, And one of the things that we're going to be trying to do is to try try out some of these things where we, we get developers cool. together and share the screen and, and walk through code and stuff like that. So anybody right. who's a developer here today who is interested in that, please do come in two weeks time and we'll see if that works. Is that mentoring? <laughs> Yes. Uh, yeah, I mean, this might just be educational, or just be showing off. I, I don't mind e either way, but we'll see what we'll see what works. Cool. So, anything else on uh, community and developer development? Uh, maybe. Go for it. Um, what about trying to participate in uh, outreach or other ways to? increase diversity in our uh, code contributor community? That's a long-standing already, remark. Yeah, we've already had a vote that we do want to do that. Um, it's not- Because we, we, have same... money, so we, we have money, so we could participate in, in uh, outreach. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we've gone down that road a few times. There's 
It's a little bit of a different program than um, Google Summer Code, and it works a little bit differently. And so it seems like we haven't quite like synced up there as far as like, I think we have to come with both a student and a mentor or something like that, and also have to provide some of the funding or identify a sponsor to help. So there's a little bit more involved in it. So one thing that would really help is if we had someone that could participate from like a coordinational standpoint. I've tried to do that myself, but I don't I don't think I'm I wasn't able to make it work. Uh, so if we could get someone else that enjoys working with um, students and uh, mentors to try to help just connect the dots and make sure all the things that need to get done get done. Um, we've run afoul of, of schedule several times where we've wanted to get involved and we just missed the deadline. That's happened a couple times. So so what's yeah. the next deadline? Good question. I don't know. Um, and I think they have multiple per year. So there might two, be... I think two per year. Yeah. So there's there's probably more, more than a couple chance or there's a couple chances yeah, to but do it. If we could vote to basically budget it for the next time or something like that, then it would save time. There's a question: uh, Is Outreachy limited to pro programming? To what? To to programming. Um, that's a good. I don't think so. But I think the programmer community is the one in most need of diversity in Inkscape. That's my opinion, of course. True. Yeah, That's I, do, I do tend to agree. Our, our diversity is concerning to me. I mean, um, the vector theme is more diverse, of course. And, and uh, this also, uh, from, from what I could tell, it looks like the outreach program uh, works better if you can do it in scale so that if you're just doing one student, uh, there's a lot of overhead and cost. But if you do the second, third, fourth, the more students you do, uh, the more funding becomes available and the simpler it is. But you have to have the mentors to. Uh, yeah, but uh, we students. have to provide the financial support for the first student. The first one, yeah. So we, and of course, we have to start somewhere. It's. Well, we voted. We voted for one of the past ones uh, to budget the money, and I don't know if that was specific to that particular year. But um, either way, we can we can revote and reapprove that. The main so, thing, though, is we need somebody to step up to to make things make sure things work uh, coordinationally. So the deadline is August for the next round. So what is the is that a deadline for an application or just a yes for project enroll? application? So that doesn't give much time to get a project together unless somebody's ready to start working on it right now uh, and find a student and a mentor and stuff. When's the next deadline? I can just uh, we just have the month in like uh... all right well how about i go ahead and, and organize the vote mm -hmm. and hopefully somebody maybe we, can... we, we we should be able to ask karen of course okay yeah. Okay. Oh, I think. Yeah, we need somebody on our side to to help find students and mentors. And w one project we could uh, do with project. Outreach is like multi-page, for instance. Mm -hmm. It's like an X plus code project, and mm -hmm. like it's a mix of a UX and code. So it, I think it would be a very good project for. Uh, we, we we do actually have quite a long list of UX fe features, so um, I, we we could actually pick two different things to make sure that we're we're driving things clearly. So if we wanted the multi-page to be a paid developer contract thing that we want to push, then we should, I think we should keep that separate or like you know focused. That's not a bad point. 
Well, maybe the, the right question, the right place to start with is who would like to mentor? Because uh, if we can identify the mentors, then oh, we, they the mentor suggest... depends on the project. No, uh -huh. I'm suggesting do it the other way around. Find out who can do the mentoring and then what projects they want to mentor. And then we try to find a student. I, mean, I, I can projects. mentor on most code aspects, but I cannot mentor on UX research. Okay, so it sounds like Mark, you'd be interested in mentoring depending on the project. Yeah, d depending on the project, I, I, I can mentor on many things, but basically, I can co-mentor for the code aspects. But not, okay. Talk I cannot or... commit to mentoring on UX or anything. Sure, sure. Anybody else? I mean, I mean, I, I feel like I never stop mentoring, to be to be honest. Um, but that's because I do it in a very chaotic way, so I don't know whether my unstructured mentoring is applicable. Okay, that's fair. All right. Well, if anybody else would be interested in mentoring, contact me. Um, and if anybody be interested in doing the coordination work of just communicating with uh, mentors and students and helping, just bridge the gap. Contact me. Um, so um, we'll need to get we'll need to get things moving organizationally quickly, like in the next couple of days, if we want to meet the August deadline. So if if things don't seem to come together within like a week or so, let's pass this one and go to the next one. Sound good? All right. Any other business? Yes. Um, so. I'd like to raise points of um, we. I, I feel like we need to increase the diversity of the board, and in order to do do that, I feel like we should um, consider having a, a, a new a new election. Um, it doesn't have to be soon, uh, but I think we should be um, considering increasing um, the the not only the um, uh, demographic diversity of the board, but also like having perhaps another mem member who's a non-developer um, on the board. Maybe we could replace Josh, who is rarely present or active. I mean, we, we definitely want to make sure that we're doing things in the both correct way and also uh, uh, consensually. Because like, I don't feel, I don't like the idea of kicking people off, but. We do have a situation where we, we could do with more people having more permission or like more agency in the project, and and this is a good opportunity for us to increase increase the diversity. I think we can also another option is we can also increase the size of the board. Okay, we would need to respend the um, the project uh, charter or whatever. But, yeah. Uh, the, the, the other option is that I'd I'd actually be willing to step step down for, from the board myself in order to. Open up a slot if that was needed, because I think I think this particular issue of, of diversity is something that is in, very important that we should tackle. Um, but I'm interested to hear what the rest of the board thinks. Good, good question. Why don't we do that? Um, since Ted and Josh aren't here, let's uh, let's do this via email. I'll go ahead and draft something up, I guess, and then um, just something short. And then we can just see how the discussion goes from there. Yep. Yeah, I agree. We, we do need to improve the diversity. One other thing I'll add is that um, we need to, I think one of the problems in the last couple of elections is that there's been a lot of people that haven't felt that they deserve to be on the board or they don't want to run for the board because for whatever reason. Um, so we may, if we want to increase the diversity, we may need to be more actively recruiting people and encouraging people um, that who you know that have viewpoints that we want to include on the board um, to to run. Because you know, like we said earlier, it is a commitment that we're asking of people. But for the sake of the project, um, it's best if we can increase the diversity. All right. Any other business? If not, enjoy your weekend. Uh, when's the next? When's the next? Uh, the next, uh, next session. Oh, 
Next board yeah. meeting is the 7th of August. <laughs> OK, and then the Martin, the next session. So, the next, so, so we're going to continue on from here. Uh, so the recording will stop in a minute, and we'll the rest of the session uh, will be the same activities that we've, we've been doing, but it'll be more free, free form. And I'm going to encourage people who have not yet had a voice uh, to come forward and speak. Um, the next next week will be the uh, user experience and, and design day. Uh, Adam hopefully will be able to host a meet, meeting at the same time that this board meet, meeting occurred. And uh, we'll be talk, talking about user design issues and priorities. So if you're interested in, in how we, we want to prioritize different features, it doesn't guarantee that features get done, but it does you know, provide a, a sort of um, structure for how we want to do uh, user experience testing and design. The activities for next week will be uh, paper cuts and doing some testing. So I hope uh, more people will be, be able to re rejoin us for next week. Great. All right, well, thank you all for attending. Do Thanks we do guys. a pause or do we do a break? All right. Yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to um, take a five minute break after I pause the recording. Yeah, I'm going to do a five or ten minutes break too. <laughs> Excellent. I'm, Anybody I'm, else? I may mean, I may need to disappear. I have uh, I have breakfast, I think. I need to eat. Uh, if if anybody wants to take um, the, the the voice while we're taking a break, uh, please go right ahead. <laughs>